not talk too much. It's not my show. I'll just uh, start doing the official thing. I just thought that we should have a little bit of background, you know, to uh, what, why we are here today, even though I do know that a lot of us know why we left our offices and our homes when we could have been uh, resting after the day's job. So I'd like to call to, um, to, call to come uh, right here. These are the uh, special, everybody's special, the individuals who would be officiating and giving out. I, I don't want to put myself in a tight corner right there. And um, all right, so we'll delve right into it now um, with uh, the opening welcome remarks. And the welcome remarks will be coming from the special advisor to the president on economic affairs in the office of the vice president, Dr. Tokpe Fashua. Please. Thank you very much and uh, good afternoon to us all. Uh, protocols, how do I start? I don't think any um, protocols have been laid, but I know there are former ministers here present, uh, professors, former advisors to government, former DG of DMO, I can see him there, uh, our boss, uh, president, vice president here present, of the um, African Development Bank. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, including those who will be getting their certificates today, thank you very much. It gives me great pleasure to be invited to be part of this epoch-making event, the graduation of the first cohort of the African Development Bank's Public Financial Management Executive Training Series under its Public Finance, Financial or Finance Management Academy for Africa, PFMA. I want to thank the organizers for inviting me to make these remarks and to welcome you to this beautiful city of Abuja, the capital of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. I believe you have had some time off to explore and savor the city. As I understand, you had already spent three days in the final training sessions on enhancing accountability, transparency, and curbing corruption and illicit financial flows in Africa, leading up to this graduation ceremony. I understand that the PFMA for, uh, was approved by the board of the bank in June 2022, and has since been providing the 18, an 18-month 18 structured executive training on public financial and debt management to cohorts of over 145 participants from across all the regional member countries of the bank of which 51 from 26 countries are graduating in this event. I understand the training covers the public financial management cycle and ecosystem, including domestic revenue mobilization, macroeconomic modeling and forecasting, public budgeting and expenditure management, public debt management and sustainability, public-private partnerships and accountability, transparency and curbing anti-corruption, anti-money laundering, and illicit financial flows. I think uh, we should give those 51 who have been able to scale out of 145 that started a huge round of applause. <laughs> the curriculum is undoubtedly rounded and apt for the needs of our countries in upscaling the urgently needed knowledge and capability of public officials who work in the public financial and debt management functions of government. This graduation is of the serving participants, which we are witnessing today, December 14, 2023, is a test testament to the commitment of the bank in responding to the need of the regional member countries to fast track capacity development towards the achievement of the bank's high five agenda the UN Sustainability, Sustainable Development Goals, and the AU Agenda 2063. I understand that the PFMA provides a platform for the aggregation of knowledge from relevant institutions and making them available to our public financial management officials. I find this very innovative in capacity development and should be scaled to other areas of capacity development needs in our government beyond public financial management. I commend the institutions that partnered with AFDB in delivering this innovative program, especially the World Bank, the International Monetary Fund, the Commonwealth Secretariat, the United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, African Tax Administration Forum, ATAF, 
Collaborative Africa Budget Reform Initiative, CABRI, um, Africa Organization of English Speaking Supreme Audit Institutions, West African Institute for Financial and Economic Management, YFM, Macroeconomic and Financial Management Institute of Eastern and Southern Africa, MEFMI, OECD Global Forum, Open Government Partnership, Open Ownership, Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa, GIABA, and African Finance Corporation, among others. I understand that in addition to the graduation ceremony, there are graduation ceremony, there are other PFM capacity development events holding here this over this weekend, including the dialogue session of Africa public debt managers from across the continent to del deliberate on ways to enhance capacity development on debt management and formation of an African debt managers initiative network, as well as the dissemination of the benchmark macroeconomic models for effective policy management in Africa report. This could not have come at a more auspicious time than now, that many African countries are facing various levels of macroeconomic and debt challenges. I believe that these will significantly contribute to the capacity of the continent towards building more, a more fiscally resilient economy that is needed for the achievement of a prosperous Africa that we all aspire. At this point, I would actually want to challenge the uh, graduating students on two issues. First is the debt uh, levels of African countries and also the issue of budgeting. Um, as you may know, apart from uh, being customers at TV stations, customer I'm called, even though they don't pay me and I don't pay them, um, um, I also do a bit of writing. And in some of my writing, I've also challenged and done the research that showed that uh, African countries seem not to be budgeting enough for their, for, their, for their citizens. Of course, that also hacks back to the issue of uh, revenue mobilization, but not only that. It's the conceptual framework behind governance that needs to be fixed. For example, Nigeria's budget per capita is one of the lowest in the world. Budget per capita at the federal level is about $165, which probably cannot do anything. However, countries like South Africa are doing better at about 2,200. Angola is about 1,200, Algeria about 1,000, some countries around 700, $400. But, when, but if you go to Europe, you see budgets of about 20,000 pounds, $20,000, $25,000 per person per annum in the U.S. as well, about $30,000. That begins to tell you that's going to report on your human capital in, you know, initiative and development indexes and all of that. You know. And also on the issue of debt. Are we, are we overborrowed already? Uh, there's a big argument in Nigeria about overborrowing. But I think that um, if we're talking about 41% to 45% debt to GDP, we haven't started. That means that you're not leveraging your balance sheet. And I think that the real issue is that we wait for cataclysms and catastrophes before we go at borrowing. For example, the last one was COVID. We opened the bank. And at the end of the day, you may not know what you did with that money. So where we can find projects that are bankable, that have their own cash flows, I think we haven't even started well in Nigeria and in many parts of Africa as well. The choice of Abuja, Nigeria, for this landmark event, uh, this landmark event underscores the importance of the, the bank and its partners attached to the issue of capacity development in public financial and debt management on the continent. As the largest economy and most populous in Africa, Nigeria occupies a very strategic place in the economic development ecosystem of the continent. Public financial and debt management remains on the front burner of government's renewed hope agenda. Of, that's Nigeria's government and President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's renewed hope agenda for economic growth and shared prosperity for all citizens. Key economic policy objectives of the government include optimization of revenue, mobilization, and tax reforms, blocking of leakages in public finance, improving public procurement, and spending efficiency and supporting the doing business environment for private sector investments and job creation. Nigeria has much to share with other, Africa, with other African countries in the areas of public finance and debt management. The country has one of the most advanced legal and institutional frameworks 
and system for public finance and debt management on the continent, including the strong Ministry of Finance and National Development, Debt Management Office, Revenue Authority, Central Bank, Capital Market, commercial banks with operations across the continent, and an independent supreme audit institution, anti-corruption agencies, legislature, and vibrant civil society, and media that ensure adequate oversight and accountability over public finances. So don't be deceived that all of these media people are here. They are always on the case of government. To, the, to those graduating in this pioneer class of the Public Finance Management Academy, I believe that you have received adequate knowledge and resources over the last 18 months of rigorous training to boost your individual capacities to enable you to perform your duties more effectively in your countries and the continent in general. I extend my hearty congratulations to you and hope you cascade down the knowledge you have acquired over the past 18 months to your colleagues back home. That's very, very critical to share the knowledge. Uh, the more you share, the more you even know yourself. That's why teachers are very knowledgeable. And of course, like they say, the only thing nobody can take away from you is that which you have up here. I wish to congratulate African Development Bank, especially the African Development Institute, on this very innovative initiative of the Public Finance Management Academy for Africa and its program of capacity development across the continent. Our government will continue to support this initiative and ensure that we take maximum advantage of the opportunity to strengthen the capacity of our public financial and debt management workforce. At this juncture, ladies and gentlemen, it is my singular pleasure to welcome you once again to this graduation ceremony and all the activities lined up this evening. I wish you a successful event, a happy stay for the rest of the time you have in Abuja, and a safe return home. We hope to see you again. Thank you very much, and God bless you. Um, first, let me um, bring you the greetings from the president of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akin Wumia Deshina, who has not able to join us today because of other competing uh, engagements. Dr. Tokwe Fasua, Special Advisor to the President on Economic Affairs in the Office of the Vice President, Federal Republic of Nigeria. Honorable members of the Public Financial Management Academy Policy Lab Unit. Distinguished graduates of the PFMA First Cohort. Ladies and gentlemen, it is my great pleasure to welcome you today to the graduation ceremony of the inaugural graduate, graduates of the African Development Bank's Executive Training Program on Public Financial Management Academy for Africa, PFMA. Approved in June 2022 by the Board of Directors of the African Development Bank Group, the PFMA is designed to deliver high-level structured capacity development programs, including training, peer-to-peer -peer learning, technical assistance, advisory services, institutional support programs, and policy dialogue to African countries across the whole of the public financial management ecosystem. The PFMA is an implementation activity of the African Development Bank Group's programs designed to strengthen capacity of the African countries in economic governance and knowledge management to enhance wealth creation, prudential management of public resources to improve the quality of lives of the Africans. In 2021, the bank's board of directors approved a capacity development strategy a strategy for economic governance in Africa, a framework for the management of illicit financial flows in Africa, and a multidimensional action plan for the mitigation of debt distress in Africa. In addition, the bank also launched a program to produce a public service delivery index, PSDI, to provide an independent and and standardized index for assessing the delivery of public services by public servants 
across Africa. The goal is to work with uh, our partners to establish a price to in, that will incentivize improvements in the management of public resources and deliver improved quality of public services to our countries. So in addition to the capacity development programs of the PFMA, including co country diagnostics of the PFM system, ongoing technical assistance, peer-to-peer -peer learning and networking delivered during the past 18 months of the training program. We have also delivered structured executive training that have delivered that on key thematic areas of the PFM, as we already heard. These areas include domestic revenue mobilization, macro fiscal modeling and forecasting, prudential budgeting and expenditure planning and management, including performance-based budgeting and medium-term expenditure frameworks, sustainable borrowing and sustainable debt management, reporting and transparency, including the traditional sustainable uh, debt sustainability analysis, DSA, which countries often do with the IMF. We also handled public financial, uh, public private partnerships in the financial management ecosystem and also deepening domestic financial markets and strengthening supreme audit and accountability systems to enhance transparency and curb illicit financial and resource flows in African countries. In addition to delivering these technical assistance and knowledge programs to enhance the capacity of our public officials on PFM, the Academy will also work with policymakers on soft skills that enhances development and that develops changes in attitudes and mindsets. One of our eminent scholars just launched a book on development as attitude. This will be achieved through high-level policy dialogue with leaders and engagement with civil society, youths, and women to understand and, um, and propagate principles of probity, accountability, and um, uh, in public services and public uh, finance management. We are doing this because we understand that technical knowledge alone will not create the changes we seek. These programs are complemented by the bank's institutional support and program-based operations designed to foster necessary governance reforms needed to curb leakages and corruption, illicit financial and resource flows, resource theft, and also strengthen supreme audit and other oversight functions in countries. Several instruments are already being developed, including beneficial ownership registers and a public service delivery index that are being developed with our partners to help us in the implementation, monitoring, and evaluation stages of this program post your graduation. The rationale for focusing on PFM activities is obvious. Africa is natural resource rich, but often cash poor. Several studies have attributed this to poor management of public resources, from ineffective mobilization and utilization of domestic revenue, unsustainable borrowing, and lack of prudence in the use of debt resources, illicit financial and resource flows, resource theft, among others. All these form leakages in our systems that is hemorrhaging the continent of scarce resources needed to deliver public services like health, education, infrastructure, and other things we know that countries need the fiscal space to deliver on. In many cases, all these are referred to as corruption. But in my language, we call them thieves because when you take what doesn't belong to you, you are a thief. Currently, African countries lose almost 90 billion in illicit financial flows, or if I put it in my dialect, in theft 
of public resources, and much more in illicit resource flows and resource theft from our mines, from our oil rigs, and national resource coffers. Poorly implemented fiscal policy incentives and excessive dependence on commodity exports for foreign exchange earnings continue to bleed Africa of billions of dollars, millions of jobs, and well-being of our continent. These expose the, the countries of our continent to highly volatile global market prices and highly vulnerable supply chains, both of forex, but also of food and fiber and energy resources. You just need to think back to the past three years and see how the war in Russia, Russia's war in Ukraine created a hike in food prices in Africa. And we can understand how unsustainable it is for a continent that sits on 65% of global arable land in the world is importing food. And you trace all this, you come back to how public finances are managed. You will agree with me, your excellencies, dear graduates, ladies and gentlemen, that this situation is not acceptable. It's also much more not acceptable because I did hear my father discuss the same issues when I was in primary school. Today, my children are hearing me discuss the same issues. And God forbid that their children will hear them discuss the same issues. It will take change of attitude, change of our knowledge, skills, tools, and implementation of public financial management and accountability systems to change those narratives. Like my boss, Dr. King Umiya Desina always says, Africa should not be the museum of poverty. The Academy provides opportunities for African countries and experts to share practical experiences and learn from each other to improve PFM practices across the continent. By bringing together experts and practitioners from Africa and from East Development Partners, the World Bank, IMF, and the rest of them we have heard of today, we are encouraging peer-to-peer -peer learning among African experts, but also between African experts and global experts. Among African practitioners, but also between African practitioners and global practitioners so that together we can understand what works elsewhere that we can adapt to our own uh, conditions and what works in Africa that others can also adapt to. And more importantly, what is working in Morocco that Nigeria should adapt, what is working in South Africa or in Nigeria or in Egypt or in Kenya that people should adapt. I have to say, when we did our survey to consultations to establish this academy, I, was, I found very heartwarming experiences that among all the key aspects of public financial management, you find golden nuggets of expertise and practices in some African countries, but not through the whole cycle. And normally, the weakest part of a system defines its strength. So you might be very good in budgeting, but bad in borrowing, that your budgeting will still lead to deficits. You may be very good in managing debt, but poor in mobilizing domestic revenue. You will still borrow more and more because you are borrowing even for consumption. So we need to strengthen that capacity across the whole ecosystem of public financial management. This is why I really commend the first cohort of the 145 public officials nominated by 45 African countries who commenced this 18-month structured capacity development program in July 2022. Much more of these 145 public officials, 51 public officials from 28 countries seated here today have successfully completed the capacity development programs and satisfied the conditions to be certified by the bank group and its partners as PFM experts in their respective countries. I think you deserve a, a round of applause. 
I really commend and appreciate Dr. Akin Wumia Deshina, President of the African Development Bank Group, for his leadership, vision, and support to innovation, both to the African Development Institute and the whole bank, as we, we started with the idea of initiating, designing, and processing the proposal to establish the PFMA Academy and getting, them, uh, getting that approved by our board of directors. Those who are not in multilateral development banks will not understand how it is that you need to get 81 different countries reach a consensus on a particular program. And through his support, we were able to make that happen. Please give it up to my boss. I also thank the board of directors of the African Development Bank Group for approving the proposal and for their continuous support as we continued to implement the PFMA to date. Without their support, the PFMA will have remained an idea in my head, therefore useless. But today, they have helped give that idea wings to fly, and this graduation is, uh, ceremony is a clear testament to that force that they have given the PFMA. I also especially appreciate with deep gratitude for the depth and continued collaboration by our institutional partners for their own reserved commitment of their resources, both in human and financial capital, to co-design and co-deliver -de the capacity development programs under the PFMA. There are many, but please allow me time to name them one by one. These include the International Monetary Fund, IMF, the World Bank, Africa Finance Corporation, AFC, African Tax Administration Forum, ATAF, Collaborative Africa Budget Reform Initiative, CABRI, African Organization of English-Speaking Supreme Audit Institutions, AFROSIE, Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa, GIABA, the Commonwealth Secretariat, COMESC, United Nations Conference on Trade and Development, UNCTAD, Open Government Partnership, OGP, Open Ownership, OECD, Global Forum, also known as the Global Forum, Macroeconomic and Financial Management Institutes of Eastern and Southern Africa, MEFMI, and several other universities and experts who have contributed to this. Please give it up to our partners. I also wish to thank the PFMA Policy Lab Unit, our practitioners in Africa and globally, who has helped to design, deliver, monitor, supervise, and deliver um, the PFMA. We also call them the faculty members of the PFMA. Please again allow me time in gratitude to mention them by name. Honorable Mohamed Boussaid, former Minister of Finance, Morocco. Honorable Seth Tekbe. Honorable Seth Tekbe, former Minister of Finance, Ghana. <laughs> Professor Osita Obu, former Economic Advisor to the President and Minister of National Planning, Federal Republic of Nigeria. <laughs> Dr. Abraham Wankwa, former Director General, Debt Management Office of Nigeria. Dr. Edward Nsimba, Global Macro Modeling Expert from Angola. Mr. Etienne Yemek, PFM Expert from Cameroon. Professor Ibi Ajayi, Professor of Economics, University of Ibadan, Nigeria. Mr. Johan Krinal, former Debt and Asset Management National um, National Treasury of South Africa. <laughs> Mr. Juan Jose Pradeli, PFM expert from Argentina. <laughs> Dr. Mariam Rashid Umarji, PFM expert from Mozambique. 
from this list of experts and institutions, you can see the wealth of knowledge and experience that has been brought to bear to brushing up the skills already held by our public officials working in our debt management offices, in our ministries of finance and central banks. Finally, I commend the 145 pioneer trainees and the 52 graduates nominated from the ministries of finance and economy, planning and budget, central banks, revenue authorities, treasuries, and debt management offices across African countries. I also commend their ministers and director generals for nominating them and giving them this time for 18 months to go through this training. As we look forward to celebrating your graduation ceremony today, the 14th of December, 2023, I'll call on you, dear graduates, to be the touch bearers in Africa's effort to enshrine full transparency and accountability across the PFM ecosystems, first in your countries and second across the continent. You can hear from our moderator and our journalists asking for what happens after, what is the outcome. I'm actually going to have a special collaboration with them to be on your back to check what, how you are implementing the programs that you have. Because for us at the African Development Bank, all these make sense when it leads to increases in the percentage of uh, 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 revenue mobilization to GDP, in the reduction on the percentage of debt to GDP, in improving the quality of public financial management, reducing, um, reducing illicit financial flows, curbing corruption, and resource theft. And it will take you to make it happen. Africa must stand together to mobilize and efficiently manage the resources, their resources required to enhance productivity and create wealth in Africa for Africans. Because nobody else will do it for us. And because together we can. Thank you so much. All right, now we have a video just to uh, give us all an idea of what has been going on in 18 months, the training, um, how those modules that we've heard about uh, were exposed and highlighted to uh, those individuals that are graduating today. So we'll just uh, take that in a couple of minutes and we'll be back. The African Development Bank is dedicated to mending and filling up Africa's economic bucket with new, increased, and strengthened capacity. On a continent where years of a lack of accountability and transparency, corruption and illicit financial flows created a recurring fiscal sinking hole, we now have a fresh group of graduates equipped with the tools to stop these gaps and keep our financial resources in Africa where they belong. Filling the fiscal bucket and plugging up financial leaks requires sound public financial management which ensures that institutions dedicated to revenue mobilization, budget and planning, debt management, as well as transparency, anti-corruption and anti-illicit financial flows are adequately resourced with the human resources capacity to perform their functions. To address this need, the African Development Bank set up the Public Finance Management Academy for Africa to provide rounded capacity development support to regional member countries in the entire public financial management cycle and ecosystem. Implemented by the African Development Institute, the Public Finance Management Executive Training Series is one of these supports. The Academy has provided training to 145 public finance and debt management practitioners from over 45 regional member countries in an 18-month structured executive training on the core areas of public finance and debt management. The Public Finance Management Academy PFMA trainings are delivered in strong partnership with global and regional institutional partners, including the World Bank, IMF, Africa Finance Corporation, African Tax Administration Forum, Collaborative Africa Budget Reform Initiative, African Organization of English-Speaking Supreme Audit Institutions, Commonwealth Secretariat, OECD Global Forum on Transparency and Exchange of Information for Tax Purposes, 
and the Intergovernmental Action Group Against Money Laundering in West Africa, among others. The first cohort of trainees have gone through six modules of the PFMA's Public Finance Management Executive Training, which started in June of 2022, culminating in this graduation today here in Abuja, Nigeria. The six modules covered 1. Domestic Revenue Mobilization in Africa in Times of Crisis and Beyond 2. Macro Fiscal Modeling and Forecasting in Africa and its Application to Public Finance Management 3. Prudential Public Budgeting in Africa 4. Debt Reporting, Management and Sustainability in Africa 5. Public-Private Partnerships for Effective Public Financial Management in Africa 6. Enhancing Accountability, Transparency and Curbing Corruption and Illicit Financial Flows in Africa In addition, the depth of knowledge and lessons from this executive training are being systematically compiled into policy documents that are bridging the existing knowledge gap on the subject matter and meet the needs of policymakers, practitioners and scholars. Congratulations to the graduates! You are a testament and beacon of hope that our nations can achieve more prudent, transparent, productive and sustainable public financial and debt management and build fiscal stability and resilience. So, let's celebrate this pioneering cohort as they domesticate and apply the knowledge they've acquired to their country-specific contexts. Through their efforts, Africa's wealth will stay plugged in Africa and remain effectively managed to achieve the Africa of our dreams. Uh, we're going to have closing remarks now, but afterwards, we're going to go to the fountain, close to the fountain, to take some pictures. I'm sure you don't want today to be erased just like that. You want to capture it. So, ladies, you can stop by at the convenience, touch up. Powder your nose. Uh, men, you're also welcome to do. We can borrow you our makeup <laughs> so that you're looking good. You capture the good side of your face uh, for the future. But for now, let's have the closing remarks by Dr. Eric Ogunleye. Thank you. Good evening once again, everyone. This is the moment we've been waiting for, for 18 months. But while we're happy, I have an observation. I think there is an injustice. I attended all the trainings. Where is my certificate? <laughs> Meanwhile, she have very collected about four, right? <laughs> Oh, mine. <laughs> All right, I'll try again. I'll try again. I know I'll make it. So once again, thank you, everyone. I know we, our time is fast spent, so I'm going to go just straight to the point to just thank all of you. Like I said on the first day, just coming together to see the faces behind those names we saw on the video screens. It's enough to give us hope for Africa. So thank you very much for the sacrifice. I see a lot of us are emotional, very emotional. But I think it's really worth it because you earned the certificate. You earned the diploma. You worked for it. I think the tenacity, the consistency that I see in all of you is really phenomenal. It demonstrates that there is hope for Africa and there is hope for the public financial and debt management work on the continent. So you are now an ambas you are ambassadors. And as ambassadors, what do you do? You advocate. You ensure in your little spaces, whatever small thing you can do to ensure that you carry on the expertise, the training, the knowledge you have gained it's worth it and will contribute. In my place, they say little drops make what? A mighty ocean. And so what we're doing here is to build, gradually build that mighty ocean. So you are the first drops. Isn't that interesting? Really great to know that. So thank you very much uh, for coming all over Africa and to be here. I want to very much thank the federal government of Nigeria for hosting this event. 
it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of hard work. And they offer us the ambience of the city of Abuja, and I'm sure we all enjoyed it. Uh, without going to the controversy about uh, food or no food, I don't want to mention the name of the food, <laughs> but I'm sure you all enjoyed yourself. I saw some of the colleagues were eating pepper soup and fanning themselves, but they were enjoying it nonetheless. That is what we want to see. I, we're very happy you were here. So we thank you very much, all the facilitators, all the institutions who had worked with us. Uh, the vice president mentioned them when he was speaking, and so I don't want to enumerate all of them. And in fact, you have all of them represented on your certificates. Did you notice that for those who had looked at it? Yes. So we want to thank all these institutional partners for working with us, for joining with us all these 18 months. And we're very sure and confident that the training and the partnership will continue. There's also who I will call, in addition to the president of the bank, the brain behind this idea, and that is Professor Kevin Orama. I see <laughs> he, he has thanked everybody, but um, I haven't heard him thank himself, so let's <laughs> thank him. <laughs> he actually put a lot and lot of hours of sleepless nights to ensure that these academy comes into life. It's a lot of uh, back and forth to convince the board to help them see the importance of this work and the importance more especially to the regional member countries. We appreciate your tenacity, Prof. <laughs> we appreciate your mentorship. We also appreciate your leadership very much. Then we have the Policy Lab Unit members, the faculty members, the inaugural faculty members. These are diverse people from Several backgrounds, academic, you heard some of them were former ministers of finance. Some have held several portfolios in different ministries, and they accepted to join us. It is indeed humbling to have all of you to see the vision that the African Development Bank is building and to be part of this process. Thank you so very much. I want to thank my colleague in the African Development Institute. Really, I don't know how much I'm going to thank them. I noticed when my name was mentioned, nobody clapped. But one person's name was mentioned, and everybody clapped. <laughs> that is Kamaria Badiru. It's really phenomenal to organize this kind of big event, bringing people from all over the continent and outside. Thank you, Kamaria. OK, she's coming up for recognition. <laughs> So we have several other colleagues in the African Development Institute, Chidebere Ibe, who is the task manager. Sometimes he sends me email by 2 a.m. and he wants me to respond by 2.30 a.m. <laughs> you know, it's, it's been a really tough job, marking your scripts and so on, grading, coming back. Uh, Sidwell Hove, who is also working with us on these. We have other colleague, uh, Daniel Fossen Yeboa, uh, we have um, Sendu Atuman Baka. We have Nkwanyane Nsebutswe. I hope I pronounced that correctly. <laughs> so all colleagues in the African Development Institute have been extremely phenomenal. Thank you so much for being such a team. I could call anyone anytime and uh, in the night sometimes, and they're always there. So thank you for making it happen. And let me go back to also thank the participants Sometimes you also open an eye and help us. Sometimes we grade your script and we send it back to you. But some of you look at it and say, no, there's something here you didn't see. I like that intellectual engagement. And that's one thing we really encourage all of you to carry forward. Let me also thank the management of the Transcall Hilton, who also hosted this event, as well as the Abuja Continental Hotel, our colleagues, IT, who are in the office in Abuja, DOSAF especially, 
Uh, thank you. She's been with us throughout the entire journey. You know how difficult it is to organize virtual trainings, but she made it happen. And for... Ah, oh, yes, of course. So our IT colleagues, too, who had also helped us to ensure we uh, could hear each other seamlessly, the photographers, then our interpreters, who are other colleagues who are virtually, who are uh, participating virtually. We also thank them so very much. So once again, um, I said I don't want, I, I hope I haven't taken one minute, right? Like one minute. So let me, <laughs> 10 seconds. So let me conclude by saying, as you all return, I'm not saying who is that? Pisa. Oh, goodness, yes, Pesa. You watch that phenomenal video. That is the handwork of a department we call external communication, no, e communications and external relations department of the bank. So we thank the director, uh, Mr. Solomon Mugera, here represented by two of the colleagues, Ogbuefi, <laughs> Emeka, and Nuforo. And, <laughs> and Christine Robin, who have supported this very interesting event. So once again, ladies and gentlemen, as you go back to your countries, I'm sure you all had time to look around in the morning hours, right? You did some shopping. So carry the good news back about not just the PFM, but also Nigeria. Go back and represent your constituency, African Development Bank especially, as a beacon of hope for public financial and debt management in Africa. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Eric. And also another closing remark by um, the visioner of this, Professor Rama. He also has uh, a word or two. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, everyone. It has been a great day, a great journey. And I know, uh, as we heard from our validatorians, it's a journey that just began. Um, uh, Eric took words out of my mouth in terms of thanking the wonderful, the wonderful team in the African Development Bank, and especially the African Development Institute. So I'm actually going to go a bit further to say all the African Development Bank staff here, could you please come out here to be applauded? Please, all of you. Where is our general manager? I hope she's not gone away to manage again. Kamaria, please, and the photographers, please, you need to document this moment. Um, please, uh, Pisa, all of us, please come out here so that they can see the people who have been making this happen. You know, the stories are many, and I will not bore you with them. Kamaria was on maternity leave in Canada. And the flow of emails you get from Camaria, you were wondering whether she was on maternity leave. <laughs> so, when <laughs> so, so when Eric broke the news that Camaria had put to bed, I said, no, it's a lie. I just got an email from her yesterday. <laughs> I just got an email from her yesterday. And that tells you the passion, the commitment with which they have worked. These are few people that represents a big um, coalition of people who have been working tirelessly for us to be able to move this forward. Now, um, Eric has thanked the other people, so I'm not going to call them by name, but His Excellency Eric Ogunleye earned that name not because he's a minister, <laughs> but because of his excellent and due diligence, attention to detail, and so on. But it's a tough boss to work with because, oh, you all agree with me, correct? <laughs> He's a very tough boss. He's a, <laughs> He's a tough boss to work with. Eric will, Eric will be walking and walking, and I'm telling him, please take a rest. And he thinks I'm saying take a rest because I take interest in his rest. It's because if he doesn't rest, I don't rest. <laughs> yeah, but all these are just the, the passion, the commitment that we all have. Miss Lola 
Mabogunje here is in the president's office, is in the president's cabinet, and she took particular interest in this. So when we submit our dockets, our, our programs for clearance, I knew just who to WhatsApp, and the thing is on the top <laughs> <laughs> for, for approval. And that tells you also her own attention in terms of participating even in the training um, and continuing to contribute and so on and so forth. I have, as I was already said, I cannot thank enough the policy lab unit. I cannot really find words to thank you enough. Established people in your own fields, experienced, you know, I mean, you didn't have to do this. But your voting to stand by the PFMA gives me hope that my children are not going to discuss corruption in Africa that are not going to be discussing resource theft in Africa or illicit financial flows. We owe it to the next generation to change our story. And with all of you here, I am very confident that we are going to start that change. Remember, development is attitude. So the way we go back, I loved, I loved the speech, the validatory speech of the guy who fell in love. <laughs> and that reminded me when we were trying to do the PFMA program and were consulting with countries, I was talking with the Treasury in the, in the US because it was so late I had to get a document to them. I wrote public fiancé management. <laughs> <laughs> so I got this call from this kind lady from the Treasury in the US and he said, I want to be partnered. <laughs> I want to be partner to your FNC management program. <laughs> I said FNC management. <laughs> yeah, I said please check your <laughs> check your check your document on the title you wrote Af public FNC management for Africa. <laughs> so I apologize for that and made the corrections and so on. But it really uh, if we fall in love with public finance management in Africa, we will create an environment where love can flourish. And I'm serious about that, because if we create a better economy, we are able to take care of ourselves, feed your family, uh, stress reduces, and so on. We will actually find love more. And uh, uh, you know, one of my mentors, uh, Mohammed Busaid, was describing the role of a finance manager, a finance uh, minister, and I think he's better in his words. I will ask him to do that during dinner. And he said, to be a good finance minister, you will need to know how to sink. Because when they come to ask you for resources, your answer is simple. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, 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 no. And then... <laughs> And then when it's about receiving the resources, you want to present a budget, it's yes, 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 yes. <laughs> and I'm saying that not joking, because we need to learn to say no. We really need to learn to say no. So when that your boss, I don't know whether he's a minister or a head of state or a DG or director of budget, asks you to do something that is not consistent with what you have learned. Say no, my brother, my sister. You'll be establishing your name in history. And you may think that minister is going to hate you. You will get the minister to think. Because I think what has been happening in Africa is that we all say yes, 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 yes. Because we're afraid to lose our jobs. And because of that, mediocrity thrives on the continent. Let's call the spade a spade. Change happens through men and women like you and I. And it takes just one. So and we are many. So let's make it happen. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK. Yes, thank you. And for all the graduates, because I have not had the privilege to be part of the trainings, all, yeah, the graduates, um, uh, because I have not had the privilege to be part of the training, uh, I would like to have a one-on-one -on -one with each of you 
before you leave so I can know who to ask for when I come to countries and when I get when I get calls from your ministers on how to manage public finances I will know where to channel that uh, that uh, responsibility so I'm going to be in a room the other side with uh, with Kamaria and Eriko Gunleye please while the dinner is going forward I think that will be my dinner today thank you Thank you so much, VP. Thank you so much um, for that plan to get to see them or meet them one on one. So now it's time for the pictures. Remember our tip, you have to look fresh. It doesn't matter that it's in the evening. So just stop by, refresh a bit, and then head to uh, the fountain. That's where we're taking the pictures. After that, it will be dinner. So let's do that and come back for dinner. Thank you so much. Congratulations. And thank you so much for letting me do this today. Thank you so much, VP. I'm Ini John Mekwa. Thank <laughs> you.